The following is a presentation of Morning Drive Media. From the southernmost point of Dorne to the lands of always winter, and what is west of west and the shadows in the east, this is Casterly Talk. I'm Cat Napsuck, and I'm so happy that you are all here today, sitting around the campfire, ready to dive into one of the greatest characters of all time. Not just Game of Thrones, but I'll say it, all time. He's a complicated man. He's right. He's wrong. He's successful. And he paid the price for his sins. Today on Casterly Talk, we are taking a deep dive in to Tywin Lannister. And I definitely cannot do that by myself. In fact, this this voice returning to the show today requested this moment, this show, this look at Tywin Lannister. Welcome back, Andres Cabrera. Hey, happy to be back talking Ooh. about my boy Tywin Lannister. I love this. Yes, and the reason why I requested this, Ken, yeah. is because I found out that you were a fan of Tywin. Yes. And that's a rare find. It's a rare <laughs> find. I can talk about uh, Ned Stark. I can yeah. talk about any other character, Arya. But when it comes to Tywin, most people scowl at me when I say I'm a fan of Tywin. I've gotten that. Yeah. I've gotten that. Um, gotten we're that gonna, a lot. We're going to dive into that. Like, you know, obviously, you know, I love I love Majora. And I, love, I love Stannis. And Stannis, I talk about it a lot, but I'll be honest, like, I mean, I love Stannis. That that's not a lie. But some of it, I bring it up just to be like, let me needle people. I know Stannis is a tough sell. He burned his daughter. What are you gonna do? Sure, I um, like Stannis too. Though, I like Stannis to too. Fair. You like Stannis. Thank uh, you. But Tywin, it's different, and that's why we're gonna dive into it today. There's a lot to talk about here on Casterly Talk. It's so good to have Ace back in for this one. Let's just start with some simple stats of Tywin Lannister, or just an overview. And it's so funny it, when you go. It depends on where you want to. Where you want to go, book or show? We're going to talk about a little bit about both. I was going to say we can do. Yeah, both. we're definitely going to do both. But when you go to like how old they are, the timeline. Remember, in the show yeah, is slightly adjusted from yeah. what we know. But Tywin Lannister, we got born in two thirty four A C after the conquest, died three o one. Now that's also different on the book wikis. He's born two forty two A C and died in the year three hundred. But roughly, that's what we're looking at for his age, 67. And uh, if you go to the Game of Thrones .com wiki, uh, which is the one that's focused on the show, he was listed as 67 in season four. So you got to kind of go with the actor's ages a little bit on the show. Tywin, of course, appeared in uh, 27 episodes. Charles Dance portrayed the Lord of Casterly Rock, the Lord Paramount of the Westerlands, the Warden of the West, the Shield of Lannisport, and Hand of the King to three kings. Ares the second, Joffrey the first, and Tommen uh, the first as well. Protector of the realm, savior of the city for King's Landing. That's a lot of titles. Status, the final status, deceased. All right, that's kind of where we're starting. We know Tywin. We know Charles Dance. Uh, Andres, I, I first have to ask you, what brings you to the Tywin table? Wow, that's a that's a loaded that's question. A big one. Um, it's a lot. It took me a while, but I believe it is mm. Tywin season two that got most people into yeah. Tywin Lannister. Um, it definitely the moments with Arya. Yeah. Um, but also the moments with Joffrey, I believe. And I think that's more mm. season three than anything else. Definitely. Are you um, talking about the moments where he's kind of controlling him, yeah, standing up to him? Yeah, he back at Joffrey. And sending the king to bed. <laughs> yeah. Because we, we live uh, during this time period of watching the show. It was a time period where everyone hated Joffrey. And right. all anyone ever wanted was for someone to talk back to Joffrey and to shut him down. Yeah. And the only one who was able to do it was Tywin. And a lot yes. of people had mixed feelings about it because they were like, I don't like Tywin either, but like Tywin. he's shutting down Joffrey, so I'm a fan of Tywin. It's so true because, you know, Tyrion obviously shuts him down in his own way, sure. slaps him even, but it's a little different because we're, we're already on board for Tyrion and it doesn't necessarily stop Joffrey. In fact, often it causes more problems, but you're right. Tywin is the only one. You are being counseled now. Yep. Is the only one that sends the king to bed without his dinner. Yep. That's tough. Tough sell for some folks. Absolutely. But it's a sell in the sense of you see Tywin as being ruthless and yeah. cruel and calculating and sort of not not quite evil, but definitely the villain of the story for most of the seasons. Yeah. And when you see those moments, specifically with Joffrey and 
specifically with Arya, mm -hmm. you start to get a sense that, wait a minute, this guy leans towards the gray mm -hmm. a little bit more than the black yeah. in the sense of the scale of ruthless and cruel. Like you can still see some glimmer of a heart in there and some yeah. glimmer of reason. I think that's yeah. kind of what makes him so much better of a villain than say a Ramsey or a Joffrey is that yeah. there's no reason in what they do. It's just this cruelty without reason or without logic. It's just cruel for being cruel. Chaos, Whereas yeah. Tywin wants to be cruel for a reason, for a purpose. There is something about Tywin in season two. Now season one, he shows up with episode seven, uh, you win or you die, which I still think is the quintessential best Game of Thrones episode. There's some things that have surpassed it, but that's the one Ned ends up with his, a knife at his throat. You got Cersei basically saying you win or you die, and you got Tywin showing up, putting Jamie in his place. Remember, yes. season one, Jamie, you're like, I don't like that guy. Yeah. And this is the first time, the whole speech, I love the focus on it, um, uh, you know, where it, it, we'll go a little bit to season one here, where, where he simply says to Jamie, why is Ned Stark alive? Well, you know, I was fighting with him, uh, but my man stabbed him. Let me ask you again. Why is Ned Stark alive? And it's like, oh, no. But fa and we're going to come back to season one. But flash forward to season two. I think you're really right, Ace. Season two, when, when the tickler is torturing people and the mountain, the second version of the mountain, which was the less impressive, no disrespect to the actor, just kind of didn't have much going on. Time walks in. It's kind of like, what are you doing? You're torturing possible help. This one's a girl and you think it's a guy. You're all stupid. And it was the first time I was like, I mean, he's not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 It's great, man. And then there's moments where he kind of has the sign of respect towards Arya and he yeah. kind of sees Arya as like another version, a, a, a probably a, a slightly nicer version of Cersei. Yeah. He even says it itself. He, mm -hmm. he, you remind me of my daughter. Yeah. Um, referring to Cersei. But, it, but it's one of those things where his relationship, as little as it was with Arya, kind of showed mm. himself to be a much more calculating, mm -hmm. uh, a far smarter opponent than we've seen before in Game of Thrones. Yeah. Uh, one of the things, and this is, I try to boil it down to the reason why I try to tell people I love Tommy, because I had a, a friend of mine, I said something about, uh, I was even talking about you, and I, I said, uh, yeah, Andres and I are going to go into Game of Thrones. We're going to talk about Tywin. You know, Tywin's one of my favorite characters. And I got a look like, uh, you're not, no, you, you're not supposed to like, like, like in a real world way. Yeah. And I'm like, well, look, let's try, I try to put this to the core here. And I, I want to see what you, what you think about this, Ace. Tywin in this world, this isn't the real world. Now, yes, these stories affect us and they inspire us and they teach us and they influence the real world, right? Same with Star Wars, right? But it's this this world is Westeros and Esteros and Planetos and all this stuff. In this world, this setup world, this this world that Martin's created that is cruel and tough, Tywin's doing it the way I think you're supposed to do. Right or wrong, when he talks about the house that that puts the house first and not the whims and wishes of the people, that's the house that wins. And he has won for twenty plus years. That's exactly it. It's in a <laughs> cutthroat world. Tywin does what he needs to do in yeah. order for his house to survive and to have a long lasting legacy. Everything he does is for a purpose to live his legacy, not through himself, but through mm. his children and his children's children, as he yeah. says to Jamie in, in his very first appearance. Yeah. That's Tywin in a nutshell. He's mm. obsessed with keeping legacy and keeping the family name strong. And by strong, he means keeping the family name alive Yeah, in, in a world that families get wiped out in the blink of an eye, as we <laughs> see in the and show, he does as it. he does <laughs> to various houses. Uh, exactly. Yeah. So it's one of those things where Tywin is doing what he needs to do in a world of mm -hmm. kill or be killed. Yeah. He'll kill. Yeah. And in order to not be killed. And there's, and there's these key points along the way, no secret to people who watch the show in detail, but I love, I love this, uh, the idea of when he's talking to a Tyrion in, uh, I think it's season three, uh, I actually for once took notes on a show. That's how interested I am in Ty Tywin. Uh, when they're talking about the red wedding mm -hmm. and it's the aftermath talking with Tyrion. And then uh, there's the thought of, uh, you know, the, the, the crown comes up and the King and the most powerful man. And, and Tywin says, you really think a crown gives you power. And this, I'm like, this guy Went through 20 plus years, hand of the king. He never wanted the throne. Mm. And this is a world where everyone's going for the throne. Hashtag for the throne. And Tywin's like, that's not the power. I was the power. And I really ruled. And that's fascinating to me. Yep. 
Yep. I, and I can bring it back to real world. Do stuff it. If you want. Do it. It's it's the idea of uh, I'm watching. I yeah. mentioned to you before we went on air. Yeah. Succession. And succession has that same concept. And it's very true, Ken, of, of mm. the corporate uh, idealist America, where right. if you're a giant corporation, a media conglomerate, right. where your influence is so large that you're, re- you're reaching a global impact and you have mm. so much wealth yeah. that you realize I'm throwing a lot of power away with something like a presidency or mm. something like a political office. Yeah. But I can buy yeah. <laughs> political offices. I can buy influences. I can buy presidencies. Yeah. Like you're so powerful that to you politics and Kings and all that stuff is like, dude, I can buy the King. Yeah. Like why would I want to downgrade? Exactly. Real power is, mm. is wealth. It's mm. influence. It's having the, the power to reach over that stuff and reach throughout the world. That's real power. And that's what uh, the Lannisters in a lot of way, the, the, the house of gold, mm-hmm. they, they're the ones the the kingdom's indebted to them in many ways. And that's the power that Tywin had. It, and even as he started to lose it, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. He, even as, as he didn't have any gold, yeah. just the, keeping that power, the intimidation power yeah. of I'm still the most powerful guy here even though I'm, I'm finessing right now and my yeah. minds are dried up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like, I still got power, man. Even though no one knows that my gold is like, what yeah. gold? Yeah. Uh, and uh, he's still able to just finesse his way to the top, man. That's, that's what makes Tywin the best. And again, I, I'm not saying I idolize Tywin in, uh, in, in, if I was to run a company and I, you know, I've been a manager of people and managed some big contracts and, and had 55 plus employees underneath me. And I did use, there was some stuff in Tywin that I did say, yeah, that's a good way to do it. But I, I, I want to clear, like, I don't idolize this guy because yeah. <laughs> I want to be him in real life. I just like as a character and what you're also talking, what it represents, there's a lot of layers there that are very uh, lesson worthy too. Absolutely. Well, here's the thing. Mm-hmm. I, I, I've come to this conclusion and this is, yeah. is more as many times as we both rewatch Game of Thrones quite a few times, and the a more lot. I rewatch it, and the more I live in, especially this city, Ken, mm. Los Angeles, and I know this is very Hollywood. personal. Hollywood. I come to the realization that this entire story of Game of Thrones, mm. especially if we keep it to the first few seasons, yeah. is the story between the Lannisters and the Starks. Yeah. And throughout the time, we start to realize who's going to win, the, the family that's looking out for number one and looking out for themselves and selfish and, and, and Mm -hmm. prideful or the family that's honorable and and willing to lay down on the wire and willing to lay down for other people. And obviously we start to see the swing of events and we, we cheer for the honorable and we root against the prideful. Yeah. And yet we start to realize as viewers, like, wait a minute, it's neither. It's a combination of both where you start, you start to take lessons from a Tywin and you start to take lessons from a Ned or a Rob yeah. or a Stark or a John, whoever it is. And you realize there is points that Tywin makes that maybe you should look out for yourself sometimes and, and not just mm-hmm. lay down for everyone and, and mm-hmm. let them step all over you. And yeah, you should stand up for yourself and you should stand up for your family and your children. And, and, and sometimes you should be a politician and you should, you know, yeah. Talk to other people and try to convince them and, and maybe pay some people off. Why not? <laughs> if, it, if it helps your family, why not? What's the, uh, is it, yeah, Terry had says to John, was it season eight uh, or seven? Gosh, both. Of, I'm starting to think of season and seven and eight as the same season now. Um, when Tyrion says to John, have, have you tried lying once? <laughs> have you just tried that's lying? That's exactly it. It's one of those things where like extra super honorable yeah. doesn't always work. And it's not necessarily saying, Hey, stubbornness of the Starks. Yeah. And it's not necessarily saying, Hey, be dishonorable. No, it's yeah. just saying in a world where people are easily manipulated, mm-hmm. start to manipulate them. If, if you have to manipulate them, manipulate them for the right reasons. Yeah. Not for the wrong reasons. Yeah. Um, RB three and I did an episode on the meaning of check mm-hmm. out the meaning of for anyone who hasn't, please do um, about the hunger games. Yeah. And I know a lot of people kind of roll their eyes at Hunger Games, but the Hunger huh. Games is so profound and especially the yeah. books, obviously. I, I do. I've enjoyed the, I enjoyed the books. There yeah. you go. But the, the books especially kind of get yeah. into it with Plutarch, right? Yeah. Plutarch learns with the propos, right? You know about the propos mm-hmm. and he realizes the way to create a symbol of hope is to use the same tactics that the capital uses. Yeah. So he uses directors and he uses propaganda and he uses lights and camera and effects and mm-hmm. all this crazy stuff that the capital uses, but he uses it for good. Yeah. And it's that idea of 
politicians kind of being looked down at or, or propaganda being looked down at, but he uses it for good. For good. And it's that idea of Tywin's lessons of pride, of family, of power, of honor, and, and of furthering the house name. It's kind of good lessons. Obviously, yeah. taken to an extreme, it leads down the road that Tywin eventually lands on, which is yeah. on a toilet mm-hmm. and dead. But if you reels it back just a little bit, Ken, mm-hmm. you can kind of see a different story in Game of Thrones where Tywin yeah. and Tyrion have a better relationship. Tywin and, and, and Jamie have a better relationship. And mm-hmm. Tywin kind of rules the world the end. Yeah. That's kind of the end. I, you're so right, Ace. <laughs> like, we, that's how the story would end. You if and Tywin just a little, just real, a little, a little less well, cruel. Because when I was talking to this one, one friend of mine, I said, yo, I love him. I said, you know, he's an example of, I think, how to how to manage, how to war, how to win, how to do the things you're supposed to do in this world. Um, not with the, the best of heart um, and the best of compassion and empathy. Yes, I get it. But he does the right things. But his, his, his un doing is a powerful lesson of he just failed to connect to the one group of people that needed him, his children. Yeah. And that's part of the lesson too. And I think Game of Thrones, I think we've t- I talked about this last week with the Ned Stark's death doesn't erase the lessons of Ned. Danny's death does not er- er- erase any inspiration you felt of her journey. Uh, Stannis and the pursuit of his destiny wasn't wrong. It's how it ended and how he did it and how he, he failed. And, and Davos yeah. is still Davos. A, a, a glimpse right. of Stannis. I, yeah. I still think Davos took on the Stannis the good, cloak. The good of Stannis. The good correct. of Stannis. Yeah. And I think that's part of what Game of Thrones does successfully is these lessons. And I, I was thinking, you and I are in the same mind. I was watching the scene uh, where... Uh, uh, you know, uh, they got Jamie and Tyrion uh, is there and Ty- Tywin is doing, they have my son. And and all these bootlickers are there like, well, you know, we can sue for peace. And Tyrion slaps that drink away and says, there's your peace. Uh, Joffrey uh, did ended that when he took Ned's head. And, and, and Tywin has this moment with Tyrion where he's like, everyone get out, not you. I, I, we've had problems, but you're right. You're my son. And it's, I'm not going to say sweet, but not, and I was watching the scene today, Ace, and I'm thinking, what if they got it right? What if they got it right? Yep. What if he had You're a good relationship? At a very different Game of Thrones. It I'm never still ends. convinced. I'm still convinced. It would have been Tywin's world. Yeah. It would have been his to lose because if he had that slightly better relationship with Tyrion, mm-hmm. you could see a world where this works. This yeah. all would work out. And and Tywin would probably have the world in his hand if he was just a little less cruel. Yeah. And all of that, I mean, if we can go back a little bit, and I know I don't want to yeah. bore you no, with no, detail. No, details me. But it all goes back to his relationship with his own father, right? Mm-hmm. Titus, right? Yes. And it's this idea of... Uh, the laughing lion, right? And mm. and how his father was being made fun of because he would be stepped on and being yep. being himself made fun of and laughed at. Um, and how the idea of the laughing lion was brought about because of how jovial and laughing he was, but then it turned into, no, they were laughing at him, not mm-hmm. with him. Um, and, it, and it started with the tar backs and the reins. Yeah. And it's one of those things where you start to realize when you read that story, wait a minute, Tywin's kind of right <laughs> yeah like maybe not to the extent he goes yeah. but in the sense of like you got to take some heads at some point because t- you can't just have everyone step all over you and it's one of those yeah. things where like the lannister wards are not you know the lannister always pays his debts yeah. it's hear me roar yes that's the lannister that's wards, the and that is tywin lannister in a whole because hear me roar mm-hmm. implies i'm a lion do not F with me. Yeah. That is hear me roar. That is a Lannister name. And in a way, Ken, do not F with me is kind of a good thing to say in a, in a world of Westeros. In a world of Westeros. And, and, right? And, and, and hear me roar. It's also a great uh, Katy Perry song, I believe, right? <laughs> You're gonna hear me. Now, um, I cannot tell you how many times, especially yeah. when they first released it, when you first heard the actual uh Musical, you know, the music oh, version of Reigns of Castamere released, uh, was it The National Sings It, and I bought it on iTunes. Yep. I cannot tell you. I listened you. to it on the way over here. Yeah. I, uh, me too. I listened to, uh, watching this and the Yankee game before we recorded. Listen, I listened to uh, the Yankee game and that. Um, I can't tell you how many times that I put that in to inspire myself. Ah, yeah. And it's a song about a family uh, being erased from existence. Yeah. And I love that moment with Marjorie and, and Cersei when she's like, do you know what that song's about? You know, shut up, Tyrell's basically saying, my father will do it to you. But, but it's so weird because I'm listening to the song and in my own life, uh, job problems or something going, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who are you? Mm. The proud Lord said, and then I'm going to, and I'm going to stand up for myself. Um, and it's, that's, it's the rain singing that song. It's their point of view, essentially. Um, 
It's so, but I'm like, but then I'm like, but this is Tywin. He just wiped out the Starks at a wedding. Yeah. <laughs> like I can't wait. So it's this weird inspirational. It, it is. And, it, and, it's, and I still consider it to be this weird idea of, of balance, right? Yeah. The idea of the Starks in this world and the Lannisters in this world mm-hmm. and how they kind of represent this kind of dark side, dark, dark side, light side kind of situation mm-hmm. Interesting. where, yeah. where, you're trying to find the the in between yeah. where you're not so easily pushed around mm-hmm. like a Stark would be, or or so easily manipulated like a Stark would be. Is a better yeah. word? Yeah, yeah. I don't not think pushed they were pushed around. They weren't pushed around, but no. they were they were manipulated. Yeah, I would say so, especially Absolutely. little Littlefinger with in season oh, one. Oh yeah, with Ned. definitely with Ned. Just yeah. just twirled Ned like easily, mm-hmm. as in we can talk about Littlefinger in a different episode, as we will. Um, but at the same time, not as cruel as, as Tywin eventually was, mm-hmm. but definitely as cunning as he is and definitely yeah. as strong as he is and as powerful as he is in the sense of standing up for yourself. And and yeah. you can't say, hear me roar. I was thinking about this in terms, like I said before, let me go back to the L.A. example that I have is mm-hmm. that I, L.A. is a city that is just completely fascinating to me, Ken, especially mm-hmm. coming to the city where the lessons that I keep being thrown around, whether it be through people in the industry or mm-hmm. through friends of mine that I walk around in is this kind of Lannister lesson that they keep telling me is like, look out for yourself, F everyone else. You mm-hmm. first, you first, if you got to do this, you got to do that. If you got to step on someone, do it. I mean, I don't know if you hear that mm-hmm. in LA or mm-hmm. at least get the vibe of it. Yeah. I do personally. I, yeah. I keep getting the whole, like, look out for number one, look out for yourself. You first kind of, kind of thing. Yeah. And those are good lessons to have, but in extreme of it, yeah. Kind of leads down to the negative that we see of the industry. Right. That that leads to movements. That leads to CEOs kind of overstepping. Yeah. That leads to eventually what we have notoriously in Hollywood because yeah, yeah. people take that those lessons of like look out for number one to the extreme to the point of destruction. Right. But at the same time, some of the, those the people your friends who say that mm-hmm. stuff to you that say hey look out for number one, you first and then yeah. your friends or you first and then whoever else is coming with you. Like mm-hmm. think about your career first Yeah, is the kind of lessons you get. And it's like, yeah, that's yeah. a good lesson. I yeah. should. But at the same time, I don't want to be ruthless. Yeah. I don't want to have that attitude. So, so I do think the Lannisters and Tywin, especially yeah. has a lot to teach a to a lot of there. people. A lot is there. And it really does start to really become uh, coming to focus in season two. Cause again, season one, the Lannisters are pretty clear cut bad guys. Jamie, Cersei, we like Tyrion, but yeah. we're we don't like Lannister Gold. We don't like Lannister Red. We don't like that. But season two runs rolls, rolls around. We're in Harren Hall, and the stuff with Arya, I can, I, I I still think some of my favorite stuff. We've talked about it before. We know it wasn't in the books. Not going to that right now. But I love. There's a couple moments that stand out where he um, is with his commanders, and he pulls her aside and goes into what do you what have you heard of Rod, Rob Stark, and, and she plays the game, and he kind of corrects her northern, southern type of thing, but uh, no, my lord, uh, uh, um, anyone can be killed, and she has that moment, so it's a great Arya moment, yeah. staring at him, but Tywin, it's like he's showing these guys, like, here's how to win, I'm gathering intel from the enemy, you don't know your enemy, you're all pompous and up here wearing my gold and my armor, and let me win this for you, and it's this great lesson, which flows into the other point that we can start talking about it, is... When he has that quiet moment where, he, where he's, he lets his guard, it's one of the only times he lets his guard down, I felt. And he's telling Arya, this will be my last war. Win or lose, this will be my last war. And what's important to me is my dynasty, my legacy. And it's really the core, and I don't want to say it's a soft uh, Tywin moment, but it kind of is for me. Hmm. Where you see like his whole life has come to this and he's like frustrated because he knows it's probably... There's no one to succeed him, really. He doesn't trust anyone, which is his mistake, which comes to unravel. Anyways, I love it all starts to become deeper with Tywin in season two. Absolutely. There's more to more to dig in there. Absolutely. And there's so many great moments, too, mm-hmm. that he delivers. Um, I even lined out a few of my favorite quotes from Tywin. Oh, I love um, Tywin quotes. So so obviously the, the first one is the is the classic one. Mm-hmm. And it's the one we hear him say first. And it's obviously kind of mm-hmm. obviously all of these are Tywin in a nutshell, but a lion does not concern himself with the opinion of a sheep, which is essentially yeah. him showing mm-hmm. his power and showing that, like I said before, uh, the Lannister wards, mm-hmm. and the Lannister banner, everything that the Lannister represents with the lion. I love mm-hmm. how that, how George actually does a great job of taking each trait mm-hmm. of whatever, it, whether it's a dire wolf or a lion or a bear for the Mormons or whatever yeah. it is, it, it represents and has traits there, yeah. uh, of 
the family name and how the Lannister has that. Yeah. But that's one of my favorite quotes. Um, any man who must say I am king is no true king. When he says to Joffrey, might be one of the best Let Tywin me moments. <laughs> Let ever, me tell you. If not best line ever. You can, that one you can take to the real world. And I have had that discussion with people. Yeah. I've worked for some people who are like, literally have said, it's my, it's my show in conference rooms. Um, you wouldn't think you'd see that in the uh, industry of just talking about movies, but it happens where you're, and, and it's like, well, that's your mistake. Yeah. You have to constantly remind us that you're number one. You're not number one. Yeah. You don't yeah. got it. And it goes to me. It was like when that time, that's perfection from time. It is. And I love the, 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 a line doesn't concern himself with the opinion of the sheep translates to a lot of different areas, but I was rewatching that scene today and you know, it's season one and it's put in the back part of your mind. I love that. It's this painful lesson to Jamie because Jamie's like, I don't care. I don't care what anyone says. Oh uh, yeah, you do. You like when they call you Kingslayer? Yeah, no, but like, I'm fine. No, that's what you want people to think. You, you, you care. And it was a, it was one of the first times where the cover was pulled back on Jamie too. And it's yeah. a, Great lesson. Because all we see of Jamie is just pure pride. Pride. Yeah. He's and we never knight. see him yeah. humbled. And now uh, he gets real humbled in that yeah. moment. And the fact that he's just, what is he skinning? He's like skinning a, 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 a stag. A stag. Right? A Stark. He's taking apart the Starks piece it, by piece. And it's like, this is incredible. Yeah. And he's doing it <laughs> for you're real. As you seen it, you're yeah. do, seeing him do it for real. Charles Dance. We got to give all the credit to Charles Dance. And obviously we, we have a lot of episode to get to. Yeah. But Charles Dance, people always say, yeah. Lena Headey is the best actor on the show. Mm-hmm. Nikolai uh, Calder Walls. Coster Walder is the best. Yeah. Emilia Clark. I'm sorry. It's Charles Dance. I, you know what? It's Charles Dance. I've, I've said it yeah. since season two. Charles Dance is the best actor on this show. It, it, he really is. And a lot yeah. of people overlook him just because he's like a veteran actor and he's mm-hmm. like an old school British classic actor. But it's, mm-hmm. it's Charles Dance, man. His yeah. acting as Tywin. Because here's, here's the nice thing. It's incredible. They're all great. <laughs> true. True. But and, and Peter Dinklage obviously Dinklage, won a ton of enemies. And he's the one that wins. Uh, I think Amelia comes into her own. John. I think I think Kid Harrington comes into his own. He does. I think Charles Dance season two particularly, it's the softness. It's the moments yeah. where uh Arya says, uh, what is it? She says little little girls are idiots or whatever whatever she says, and he just says <laughs> and as and it's just the softness that shows up out of Taiwan in those moments. The only time he laughs, yeah. right? It's one of the only really one of the only times he I laughs. I think it's the only time yeah. he laughs. And it's I, incredible. I love that stuff. Yeah, and he, he really, really taps. I still into love, that. and I know we already mentioned it, mm-hmm. but he slowly walks up those stairs towards Joffrey. Oh, like yeah. the the effect of like the cameras like and following click. his back and you see Joffrey's face get closer and closer <laughs> to the camera <laughs> as he gets closer to Joffrey. Yeah. And it's this like incredible moment of like we, power yeah. coming in your face. The real what are you going to do now, King? Yeah. And it's just power. like, "Oh my god, it's real power." That seems so good. I guess we can talk about it now. That seems I was again rewatching a lot of Tywin scenes today. Yeah. That seems great for all the reasons you just described. It is he is the real power. But it's one of the only moments that Joffrey's kind of like, hey, I hear there's a girl with dragons over there. We should do something. It's funny because if, yeah, it's the scene where Joffrey's kind of right. He's kind of right. <laughs> and so Tywin's, yeah. it's one of a, it's a weird, so again. It's it, a weird scene. It's a weird you're scene. Right, because it, you're like, wait a minute. This looking is, back now. Looking back, you're like, well. It's like some of the stuff with Robert in season sure. one of like, fit five armies, one goal. And a Dothraki horde, you know, all these things where you're like, oh, I guess Brathy, Robert Brathy was right. Joffrey was right in that moment, but Tywin, uh, it's just such a mesmerizing scene. Yeah. The power of play there. It feeds into the other stuff. Uh, what are the other moments that you got there? Um, I have, oh, same. It might be the same scene. Um, the king is tired. See him to his chambers. <laughs> it might be one of the best moments in Game of Thrones. Joffrey moments. Yeah. It's so funny because the way he says it, Ken, is kind of yeah. what the, his delivery is like. He's angry, mm-hmm. but he's not outrageous. Yeah. He's angry. He's just like, the king is tired. <laughs> see him to his chambers. Like, you can tell he's upset. But yeah. he's not raising his voice. He's just very much like, it, shut this little kid up, get him out of my sight. But he can't say that because it's the king. But he still says it to let him know that he's like, shut this little kid it's up. Almost <laughs> as if he's um, got some good legal counsel and he knows that if you were just to write the transcript of the moment down, you wouldn't have anything 
to be, well, the king's going to kill you. Mm. All you said is, I, po- I pointed out a fact, he was tired and on paper, it's legal. Like I didn't, no problems. You can't sue me. It's, just, it's, it's, it's a really well played from, from Tywin. Uh, you know what I mean? Where it's like, he's not like Tyrion losing control at the wedding. And also going back to the scene with, with Joffrey, when he, he talks down to him, he shows him their power, walks away, takes a beat and turns around and goes, your grace. As if like, oh yeah, that's right. You're still the king. You're still the king. So good. He plays within that and he's so yes. controlled. Yes. Um, and part of the reason uh, I love the moment too, where he tells Cersei, uh, uh, good, I, I, I wish you knew how to manipulate him uh, when she's complaining about oh, Margaret yes. Tyrell. It's a great moment. Yeah. And it's one of the key moments. Um, Cersei, I, 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 you know, I don't like that he basically calls her dumb, but there's this, this weird truth, especially in the book. I think in the book, Cersei in book four loses her way, just makes mistakes after mistakes after yeah. mistakes. And she isn't Tywin. She isn't. She and thinks she, is. she thinks she is. And so I love because this captures that more than anything in that scene. Yes. Of, you know, it's not because you're a woman. It's because you're not as smart as you think you are. And again, one of those things, uh, Tywin's kind of right. He's right. <laughs> and look what totally happens. Right. Well, can we talk like real yes. quick before we do anything else? Yeah. Um, Tywin's greatest moments. What makes Tywin Tywin? Yeah. It starts with, I believe, obviously, the mm-hmm. reigns of Casimir. Yeah. Which is what he does to um, uh, Tarbic in the reigns. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. As far as taking down Lady Rain, yeah. I forget her name, yeah. um, and the Tarpic Hall and how he drowns them in the mines. And it, yeah. obviously the Reigns of Casimir. Reigns of Casimir. He's, he's got an entire song named after him, yeah. like in honor of him. Like in honor of that's him. how you know he's a legend already. Erasing houses from existence. Exactly. And, and that's what his cruelty and his power is known throughout the realms. Mm. Just in one failed swoop, right? Yeah. Because just like two days before that, yeah. he's... A laughing stock. The Lannister name is kind of a laughing stock throughout mm-hmm. the Seven Kingdoms because of Titus. Yeah. And he realizes, like, what do I have to do to quickly gain recognition and power? Oh, I know what I have to do. Shut these two families down and basically mm-hmm. eliminate them completely. Yeah. Have an entire song written after me and let all the Seven Kingdoms know who I am. And it yeah. worked because worked. Ares names him Hand of the King. Yeah. I believe in the book it's at 20, mm-hmm. um, yeah, yeah, yeah. which is like the youngest Hand of the King. Yeah takes over the kingdom, yeah. makes it one of the best kingdoms ever. It's running. And and essentially runs things. And if it wasn't for Ares's madness yeah. and his lust for Joanna mm-hmm. Lannister, mm-hmm. Um, you could see him having the kingdom in his hand if throughout to, that time. To the end. Yeah, the because it, it was kind of Ares kind of trying to undermine him with yeah. Jamie, with Cersei, not getting Rhaegar, all this kind of little oh, stuff yeah, yeah. that kind of pushed Tywin out the door. Yeah. But Ken, even in the show, when he comes back, yeah, think about it. Whispering Wood. What is what is the most memorable episode in all of Game of Thrones history? The it's most the Red Wedding. Red Wedding. That's Tywin that's, effing Lannister. Yeah, that's what he did. Yeah. I mean, that's so evil, but it's like that's Tywin. It's also uh, Widow's Whale and mm-hmm. Oathkeeper. That's Tywin. Him like those are Tywin head. swords, man. Yeah. Like at the end of the day, like it might be ice, but it's still. It's, it's still Widow's Whale and Oathkeeper, Tywin Swords. I love, I want to dive a little bit to the Red Wedding. Yeah, series. absolutely. Let's do and, that. And the philosophy behind it. Yeah. Again, in this world, in this world. But it's it's yeah. a response to Whispering Wood, right? Yeah. It kind yeah, of is like Rob Stark's outsmarting Tywin Lannister. And he's yeah. like, oh yeah, oh, is yeah. he? <laughs> and if you had read the books before, you knew it was coming and you knew the whole thing. But I think those, and there's a lot who enjoyed the show without reading the books. And I had not read that far. So I'd read... First two, not read that far. So I'd heard this red wedding thing, but I can't tell you enough. And this is why I always encourage uh, people when you're watching these shows and movies, these big fandoms, to just kind of wait a little bit, right? Don't form any opinions until the whole thing's on the page. And then you can form, I mean, you're going to have opinions along the way. I was upset. I was watching season three going, all Tywin is doing is writing letters. It's driving me crazy. It's driving me crazy. Tell a friend of mine. And, and she knew. She's like, yeah, yeah, all, all he's doing is writing letters. And every scene, I'm like, there he is. He's writing letters again. God, I just want more from Tywin. Yeah. <laughs> and then to learn all those letters are the fate of the Starks yep. being sealed. It was one of, it was a, it was like Tywin himself was teaching me the lesson. I was Tyrion and Cersei across from him yep. going, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? And it was powerful. And I love the scene after it uh, going, uh, this is where the scene we're talking about, if you really think a crown gives you power. 
you know, Tyrion's a good guy. So Tyrion's like, is this really killing them at a wedding? And the, the quote comes back, explain to me why it is more noble to kill 10,000 men in battle than a dozen at dinner. And this is that conversation. This is going to your, your and I's topic sentence of in this world. I think he has the point. <laughs> yep. He might be saving more of his own lives. He doesn't care about yours. But yeah. I don't want to waste 10,000 of my own men killing 10,000 of theirs. Yeah. I can do it with some letters. Yeah. And it's kind of this weird, like it's, it's questioning the idea of the gods mm-hmm. and questioning the idea of honor and questioning the idea of even karma, mm-hmm. right? This is almost mm-hmm. Tywin challenging the gods yeah. where he's like, cause the whole idea, right? Is, is what I forget the, the whole killing someone at dinner whole thing. Yeah. It's what the is that? guest rights. Yeah. Guest, guest rights. rights. You don't need yeah. bread. Where, salt. Where Brand, you don't do Brand that. talks about it yeah. and it happens to, to the phrase obviously yeah. with Arya and all the mm-hmm. whole thing about, uh, what is it? Meat pies, meat pies, man. Yeah. But essentially it's like, it's Tywin kind of challenging that legend mm-hmm. or that story of him being like, you yeah. know what? This is bullshit. Yeah. I'm sorry to cuss. This, no. this is BS. I can, I can challenge. There's no what gods. The rules honor? don't exist. What's honor? <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. I'm going to save a, a couple thousand guys of my own men. Yeah. I'm going to save some lives here and I'm going to kill them at a wedding because what is, what is honor really? What are the yeah. gods really? Who's going to punish me? Who's yeah. going to punish me? There is no gods. Like that's really Tywin kind of questioning like, yeah. like almost karma itself and almost the gods themselves as like saying like, you're not going to, yeah. you're not going to punish me. Uh, you know, this is this all fake. It's it, BS. It ties in a little bit to the classic uh, relationship of Joker Batman of Joker's kind of the one out there. Like I ain't got no rules and yeah. you have to live by them. It's exactly. Tywin going, how guest rights? <laughs> I need to win. Yeah. House first. Yeah. Kick a man when he's when he's down. Yes, if I want to win. If I'm gonna <laughs> win, yes. It's it's that idea of yeah. like, if in a real fight mm-hmm. you are gonna fight dirty. Yeah. In a real war, you are gonna use tactics that are gonna give you the advantage that might not seem honorable. Yeah. Because it's gonna save your own men, and isn't that the point of war? Yeah. It's saving your own side, not their side. Especially when you see stuff in the later seasons of some of those Lannister, you know, the Ed Sheeran scene. We'll just say it, the Ed Sheeran scene when he's sitting around with, when they're sitting around with Arya yeah. and she realizes these Lannisters she wants to kill are these guys who just want to go home to their wives and kids and get a leg over and, and enjoy good beef stew. Uh, and it's like, so if if Tywin's like, yeah, those I, those are my men. I want to, I don't want them to die. This is how I'm going to do it. It's hard to argue. Again, it's keep when I'm trying to explain to someone why I love Tywin it beyond just Charles dance is amazing. And these moments are very memorable. It's just every time it came back to him, I'm like, this is probably what I'd want to be or wish my, my house leader was if I was in this time, yeah. it's much a little of Davos and Jor and all these, I want to, you know, you want to be on the good side of history, but this is different, man. This is, this is, if I'm a Lannister soldier, I don't care that they died at the wedding. Yeah. I'm yeah, glad I didn't. Exactly. It's like my family is safe. Isn't that what matters? Yeah. That's the idea of Tywin Lannister. And it's that idea that it's like, wow, it kind of works. Yeah. And it's, and it's a world that requires you to do that. And I don't know. It, it just, it's one of those things where as much as I'm the biggest Rob Stark fan there is. Yeah. And, no, and, and, like it, and it destroyed, Ned. it destroyed my heart when the red wedding happened as much as everyone else. And I yeah. still think it's messed up, but yeah. it's one of those things where it's like, Yeah. Well, look, I think stuff, is it? stuff later seasons, those those brief moments where Sansa or Arya are saying, you know, our, our dad, father didn't get, fully prepare us right for this world. He tried to be too good and, and keep us clean, especially us girls clean. I love those things because it doesn't mean Ned was wrong. It doesn't mean Ned was stupid or stubborn or the bad guy. It just means he understood more. Than, I think Ned understood the real world and he was wanted to be, these are my kids. These are my daughters. I want to, I want them to give a better life. And he didn't correctly prepare them for the Tywins of the world. Yeah. And yeah. they had to pick up those lessons. That's why Cersei's tremendously influential in definitely Sansa's life yeah. um, for good or worse. We're going to take a break. We're not done talking about Tywin. This is great. On the other side, we're going to talk uh, just some, uh, his death. I want to talk about what we felt about his death, his final moments, the world without him, the show without him, and how it changed. And also, we got a call and more of the greatest moments of the greatest 
character of all, Tywin Lannister. All right. Ghost is pretty good, too. We'll see you on the other side of this break here on Casterly Talk. Aaron Castle attack. Me and Ace Cabrera. Andres and I are diving into one of our favorite characters, Tywin Lannister. And I got to tell you, Ace, we spent, we, I know we spent the first half of the show trying to get people to understand why we love this guy. I hope it's working. I think there's a lot of Tywin fans out there. Yeah. I think they're going to come crawling out of the woodwork. <laughs> Let's talk, though, about season four and specifically when it does start to unravel for Tywin, because it does. And I think, again, that's part of the show's lessons. You're supposed to learn these things. Tywin's own children kind of go against him. Finally have had enough. Uh, the Joffrey situation goes awry with his death. Everything. Tywin starts to lose a little bit of power and dies. I want to know your your experience during that season and, and specifically watching his death. Yeah. It was, uh, it was heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking to see my boy so, Tywin go. Yes. It really was. So sad. It was sad. And it was sad kind of in the sense of like. <laughs> and he's not good. No, because I, I, I was kind of hoping mm-hmm. for him to go out like a boss, but I guess it made sense for him not to go out like a boss and the yeah. complete opposite of, of a boss. Yeah. Um, but even in the faith, in the, in the face of death, Ken, yeah. the way he acts when Tyrion opens that door, that slight little, <laughs> slight surprise, but still Just, like, yeah. I'm not that surprised where he's yeah. like, Tyrion, Tyrion, Tyrion. Okay. Yeah. How are you doing son? <laughs> and he's just like, not, he, he brings it back to like a normal yeah. conversation where he's like, what's up? He, I knew you were going to get out. You're my son. You're what's my son. up, man? I was you're, never going to kill you. You're what are you talking about? And it's like the way he just does it. You're like, man, I love you, Tywin. Yeah. Like I would have dropped that crossbow and give him a hug. <laughs> no, there's a moment <laughs> where, you're, where you're, you know, uh, you know, I, I, I got to imagine he's going right. I know time is not going to last, but, but, uh, and I'm trying to remember if I had read that far ahead in the books. I don't think I had. Maybe I did. Yeah, I did. No, I did. Yeah, because yeah. I was I was expecting. That's right. I know I did because I was expecting the Jamie Tyrion, um, you know, where the whores go conversation and stuff that didn't yeah. really happen in the show. So it was. Uh, so, but I knew it was coming. And you're even then you're thinking he, he can talk him out. He can talk him out. Of yes. It. Like, like, uh, you know, you're my son. Yeah. You're a I wasn't going to kill you. Yeah. So, but it hit me hard. Yeah, it hit me real hard. And and again, if you really think about it, what was it? What was mm-hmm. the unraveling of Tywin? Obviously, you can nail it down with the cruelty mm-hmm. towards Tyrion, yeah. unfairness towards Tyrion. But mm. but it's a big but. Mm. It's kind of a slight, and this is the one weakness in Tywin. And I, yeah. I wouldn't even say his cruelty you can count as a weakness, mm-hmm. but you can also say it's not really a weakness in, in right, this right. world, especially as we made you know a point in the first part of this episode. It's not really a weakness. Yeah. His weakness was kind of the same weakness that Tyrion had. And it's that kind of hypocrisy that yeah. kind of tore him down where he's like, I, uh-huh. I, I like booty, man. Yeah. I like, I, I like them girls, bro. Mm-hmm. And, and I can't help it. Yeah. <laughs> and it had to be that one. It had to be Shay. It had to be Shay. And thing. it's like, yeah. and it's like, that's the one button that Tyrion didn't want push. I could see him talking out of it. If, if it wasn't Shay. Shay. Yeah. I, if it was any other and no shade, at no shade, just, like, just, yeah. just him on the toilet. And, yeah. and it, it was, t- it was him and Tyrion talking. I could see him being like, I'm going to talk my way out of this, but because yeah. it was Shay, that is, it was the ultimate disrespect. Yes, Cause again, it ties it back. It ties back to Tyrion at what? 16 with the, the, uh, the wife, the, the, yep. the, the whole situation with JB and yeah. which is again, that's where the book, this, this, uh, but it's in the show too. It's I in, mean, it's in the show, but more in the, the, story, in, in the book yeah. of, uh, I don't know where, you know, Tyrion saying, where did you, where did you send her? I don't know wherever whores go or whatever the exact quote is. And that's becomes Tyrion's kind of inspirational mantra in, in book five, which is weird. And, and it's a, it's a sad story. It's a sad story that the show did just didn't have time to go into. I understand it. Um, but yeah, that, that moment. And, and it was, it was season four, season three is where things really start to at the end of it. And going into season four is where things start to change where new generation and Pedro Pascal shows up all these people we love, yeah. but to see Tyrion, uh, excuse me, see Tywin die 
to me, I was like, we are in uncharted territory for this yeah, show. And you could see that at the beginning of season five. Yes. When Jamie and Cersei are like, oh no, <laughs> we just yeah. lost our biggest shield. What do Everything. we do now <laughs> without, without our father Tywin? It's like, mm-hmm. it's, it's all hands on deck. Everyone's going to be gunning for them. Yeah. And that's exactly what happens, obviously. Yeah. But, the weakness. But, yeah. but it's one of those things, you know, what's funny. I was mm. just reading back cause, cause I was trying to prep a little bit before this episode. Mm. Um, the idea that everything Tywin has ever done throughout his life mm. was almost, almost kind of as an overcompensation of his mm. father. Yeah. And the idea that he dies in a similar way, way Mm -hmm. as his father dies because i believe his father died was it climbing a tower yeah trying to see his his mistress mistress, right right. yeah yeah and which was part of it um and it's he dies as a heart attack so he dies in an embarrassing way right kind of you know with with a mistress or a prostitute or whatever it is and that's kind of how embarrassing tywin Tywin. dies too (laughs) and it's this irony of i'm trying to you know, overcompensate for my father's weakness and embarrassment. And yeah. I die in a similarly, if not more, more embarrassing, embarrassing way, fashion. as, as we see in what I believe season six, where we see the play. Yes. Tywin. Tywin. Yeah. 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 Dying in a Dying. super ridiculous fashion. I was just looking up some, while you were talking, looking up some Titus stuff there. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 on this page, you don't have it specifically, but um, it, just the nicknames <laughs> of uh, the toothless lion, the laughing lion, like laughing you mentioned, line, yeah. and you can see how that would then affect Tywin. Yeah. And yeah. also the, the loss of his wife, Joanna. Joanna. Yeah. With Tyrion. That kind of, that kind of broke Tywin. I, 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 I feel like it would have been a different Tywin if we, if yeah. we didn't have that. Like again, not a softy, uh, nice little teddy bear, but I but think it would have been, I think a, it's a Tywin an, that it, could rule the world. It's an that under, yeah. Extra cruelty. It's an undiscussed factor. The yeah. loss of his, of yeah. his beloved wife that he seemed to have, True devotion to exactly in this era. actual yeah. love and affection for it. yeah as 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 best Tywin could <laughs> sure <laughs> since and I, sure uh, as a as a withdrawn withdrawn but it's uh, this idea man. it's this idea mm. right that the way he ran the kingdom when he was the hand yeah he ran it kind of well at, at least according to what I remember it it it's yeah it's not quite hey uh, the dictator has a trains running on time but sure. it, it it's it's uh yeah yeah no like in he, the sense that he working. was he wasn't like. You well, know, there wasn't like 10,000 bodies in the street. Because yeah, Tywin, no, no. no it, it's it wasn't thriving. like overly cruel. Ares is, uh, I think the only threat to, to Ares's kingdom was himself, mm. you know, during this time. Yeah. There's what the war of the nine penny Kings, there's things, there's the great joy rebellion. I, I get all that. I get all that. But during this time, especially if you read fire and blood and you look at uh, all the, some of the crazy things going on with the Targaryens and, and their reigns. Yeah. This was per, this was things were good. Yeah. Which is why um, part of why the Mad King goes mad, you know, the the, the the jealousy and hearing that this is really Tywin's kingdom yeah. starts to burn him up a little bit there. So uh, Tywin dies and the show changes dramatically. And not for this isn't a for better or worse. It has to change. This is the story. And I love that the walls come crumbling down. You talked about Tywin being the shield. Well, now the shield of the Lannisters is gone. And that makes it. I don't say more interesting, but I just am fascinated by what happens to the world after he goes. Yeah, and it does become fascinating. Because he's it, the connective, he's like the pillar in the center of this world. We we lose Ned and we think Ned might, well, Ned was going to be our, our main hero and everything. But really, everything ties to Tywin. Yes, because and Tywin is the unstoppable force. Mm-hmm. Tywin is known in Essos. Tywin is, uh, the mm-hmm. Bravosis yeah, the, the know who he Iron is. Bankers. The Iron Banker, you were like Bank your father. Yeah. Is, it says, we don't, we're, it's not that we're betting for another king. Mm-hmm. We're just not betting against Tywin Lannister. Yeah. Like, that's how much fear he brings throughout the world. It's like, we trust Tywin. Why? Because he's proven, yeah. Whether it be the Red Wedding, the Reigns of Castamere, the Kingdom, whether it be the war uh, mm-hmm. with Robert, uh, the the, the yeah. Robert's Rebellion, right. whatever it is, Tywin is the victor in some way or another. He mm-hmm. finds a way to win. That's Tywin. He's the LeBron James of, <laughs> of this world, and and it's that thing where it's like I trust Tywin because he's a winner. Yeah, he finds a way to win no matter what that is. And his death, though, Ken, mm-hmm. can I just say, yeah. as a fan of of both. Tywin and Littlefinger. Yeah. I had this little, yeah. like, Littlefinger's the last one standing, bro. <laughs> like, in a war of, 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 yeah. of smarts, obviously you can yeah. give an argument for, um, homeboy, I forget his name already. Mm-hmm. I'm so sorry. Um, yeah. 
Ferris? Yes, Ferris. Yeah. Um, How dare you forget the spider's I, so name? Sorry. A man of many uh, identities. Uh, um, but it, uh, you can make an argument for him too. But I still feel like yeah. he disappears in, in in some later seasons. He does. And I still am very, 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 very. Mm-hmm. And I've made this vocal on this podcast. Yeah, yeah. Upset about the way how Littlefinger went out. You don't and like still, it. I still yeah. don't like it. it and I still you. don't like his entire last season. Season. And his old reasoning. And I'm still thinking that that might be different in the book. Yeah, um, definitely, definitely. But I still saw a world yeah. where Tywin's mistakes wouldn't be Littlefinger's mistakes, if that makes sense. And I know we're going off topic. A no, no, bit, go into and it. I'll bring it back. No, go into but it. But it's one of those things where cruelty, that's the one difference between, mm-hmm. obviously Tywin had the wealth and the gold in the name, yeah. and Littlefinger didn't have any of that. But Littlefinger's politicking was yeah. better than Tywin's, yeah. slightly better than Tywin's, because he wasn't, as cruel. He's cruel. Littlefinger's very cruel. Yeah, yeah, but... But he's not so cruel that it rubs people the wrong way. I, he could still kind of finesse his yeah. way in the north. He could do it in, in the Riverlands. Like, he, he finds a way to get people on his side. I love, uh, especially in season two, we're at Harrenhal. Any scene with Baelish and Tywin. Because yeah. I don't get the sense that Tywin really likes or respects Baelish. Sure. Maybe respects what he's done, in a way. Like, he's come from nothing and climbed all, uh, all up there. But... um it's a weird, I love the dynamic between Aiden Gillen and Charles Dance. They just play it as, as I think Tywin feels like I'm stuck with you and I don't want to make an enemy of you because sure. you could cause problems, yeah. but I know I'm better than you. You know, it's, I love the dynamic. It's really interesting to see those two go head to head. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, I mean, Tywin to me is that legend mm-hmm. again, reigns a Castamere lion the 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 hear me roar everything you see from a lannister isn't necessarily jamie isn't necessarily cersei or even Tyrion. it's tywin tywin embodies all those lannister lessons whether it's lannister pays his debts Mm -hmm. hear me roar you know power money wealth every knowledge intelligence yeah all that cunning all that kind of stuff is embodied inside one character, and that's Tywin Lannister. And he knows how to do it, and one of his final great moments is in season four, uh, over the body of Joffrey, and that is his oh my coaching. God, with Tommen, I was just about to mention uh, Yeah, and, and, and the the pulling of, of Tommen to him, so knowing good. that Cersei, you messed up with Joffrey, Jamie, you're a mess, Tyrion's not even around, like, I need to do, this is the one to get it right. Yes, and the and way he the does way. it, oh. the way he breaks it down as giving a lesson, and it's a genuinely good lesson. And it's a right, it's correct. It's Again, right. yeah. Tywin is correct. Yeah. A lot of people, mm. I've seen comments when I when I look up that scene on YouTube saying yeah. like, look, this is Tywin being evil. This is And I'm like, no, this is Tywin being smart. This is Tywin being like a good grandfather. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> he's actually teaching a valuable lesson of what's the one trait that makes a good king. Yeah. That's wisdom. And he, and he really breaks it down saying that wisdom is the one thing that all these past Kings didn't have. have. And it's the one thing you need. It's the one thing you need to have. And the idea of surrendering, if I'm a young guy, if I'm 14 years old, you bet your ass, I'm going to give my throne to Tywin until I'm of age. And you bet your ass, I'm going to be his, his mentor. I'm going to, I'm going to be his apprentice. I'm going to learn everything I can from the guy. Because I've seen his victories, bro. I want to yeah. learn from from LeBron. I yeah. want to learn from Michael Jordan. Like, hell yeah. <laughs> we've, we've been doing this on Castle Talk, especially on the episodes where I'm by myself of the what ifs, these big what ifs. And as you're talking, I'm thinking, in a different world, Tywin survives. Yeah. And what if Tommen is his king? And what could he accomplish with Tommen? Tommen was a, a soft, I don't mean that in a negative way, just a soft soul. Sure. And uh, had a lot of people trying to get their claws in him, like any king, uh, especially a young king. But if Tywin, with that lesson, again, Tywin is cruel, all these things, but everything he's saying is true, including about Robert. He was a great warrior, not a good ruler. We know all that. What could he have done? Yeah. That's it's a different... It's so interesting. Because then I, I don't know if he needs Cersei and, and Tyrion and Jaime as much as he did previously. That's true. So and, it's, and it's one of those questions where... What happens in the later seasons mm-hmm. when certain events come to be? Yeah. How would Tywin respond to dragons? Yeah. Into what? How would Tywin respond to the army of the dead? How would Tywin respond to 
all those kind of big major questions you, that we got in season eight or season seven. And stuff plays out normal. It's just, and again, it's when you do these what ifs, the butterfly effect uh, happens and, and, and some things that are there go away. But just overall, overall, Tywin's in charge, Tommen's still on the throne, and Danny's approaching. Uh, I've got to think he, Tywin more than anyone, whether through fear or force and otherwise, would unite the kingdoms against her. At, and that that she wouldn't have much of a chance. Well, look at once look she at, hit those shores. Look at his relationship with Elena. Yeah, right. Elena. Yeah, who's considered to be one of the most powerful women in the kingdom. It is. Yeah. It, it completely was just like I bow to you, Tywin. Like yeah. you're the goat. I killed I your thought, king, but I'll tell you, yeah, yeah. She he well, traps her. But I mean, the idea though that even even in that mm-hmm. scene, and I and I even had this line written up mm-hmm. where she mm-hmm. says. It's a rare thing for a man to live up to his reputation. That's yes. Elena's line towards Which, Tywin. I mean, we could talk about that scene all day too. It's incredible. It's because Diana it's Reagan the Queen of Thorns it's, and, uh, and Tywin Lannister. It's and an all-star like, game. It's an all-star game. And indeed. she's like, you got me, bro. One-on-one yeah. on one game, you know, first to 21. And she's winning. She's got a lot of points. Oh, she's yeah. hitting them. She's draining and threes. She goes, uh, do you want me to write it? Loris Tyrell <laughs> to the Kingsguard? <laughs> That's all I got to say, man. And you're yeah. done. 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 And, and there would be no f- freaking mm-hmm. sparrow. Yep. There would be no, like Tywin would squash, squash, All of squash, that would be done. Yeah, it's Cersei, it's Cersei trying to be her father, giving, yeah. giving her so get re, re, uh, powering, uh, empowering the faith militant. Like everything would yeah. be under Tywin's. Even yeah. even Ramsay would, would probably find a hard time betraying yeah. his own father if Tywin actually had his back, like, pretending Tywin had his back, right? Yeah. Like we can make an argument that Tywin mm-hmm. would somehow find a way to make Ramsay pay for what he did to, towards to, uh, Papa Bolton. I forget his- uh, To Roos? Yeah. Roos. Uh, yeah, if it even got that far. If it even got that far. I'm just um, saying like, these are all things that Tywin could have contingency plans for. Yeah, like I, and, and that what if, and, and this is what I love about these what ifs, they spin off. It's like, I don't even know if Roos loses control of Ramsey. I think Ramsey's on a wild card, but I think, sure. I think Tywin would be like, bring your dog to heal, man. Yeah. I think, I think it would have happened. And then it gets past that. Let's say it gets past that. And maybe he stays alive, but the, the Danny's on, she's burning the land for their dragons. And then Jon Snow emerges and says, we got bigger problems. What do you think Tywin would do in that situation? And which one? Jon Snow comes and says, we got bigger problems coming down for the North. The Night King is coming. Oh, when he presents to what, Cersei. Yeah. What do you think Tywin does in that moment? Wow. I don't know. <laughs> I can't put myself in Tywin's head. Be- uh, because I'll say, I, my mind goes to where Cersei's mind goes to is a little bit of what her father taught her. The the white rushes at her and she's pregnant and she tells Tyrion that, that that's all. I, I didn't care about anything. I, I thought about that. Yeah. And it's as close as I've ever, you know, I think in recent times that Cersei is like, yeah, house first. Um, so, you know, Tywin has that in him, but he's got to be smart enough to go. Oh, this isn't a, a, a curiosity on the far side of the world. Yeah. Does he team up? I mean, I got to think he teams up with John. I got to think he gives him some kind of support. I, I think he does. Because I think he gives almost like maybe a feeler. Yeah, maybe, maybe not all his troops, but maybe a big portion of his troops just to feel it out. Just to hold something the court, that, that Tywin does that would be smart that I, I probably am not smart enough to think. Yeah, you and I aren't uh, we're not <laughs> leading no, the Lannisters, but be only because look, <laughs> we even, even when he sacks King's Landing, he yeah. switches sides in that effort. Yeah. So it's not that he's not a loyal. He's loyal to his own you know desires and needs first. And he'll, he's loyal to you up to that point. Yeah. So I could see him going, all right, Dragon Queen, even if, if she's there or not. All right, son of Ned and maybe others, you know, I'll play your game. Sure. Where much like Cersei promised. See, Cersei promises that and then goes around. And doesn't do and it. Doesn't. Yeah. I think he might have been like. He yeah. might have been. Yeah. And then found a way to work it to his advantage. Sure. He might. He might have found a way. Yeah. <laughs> Tywin makes a deal with the Night, Night King. King. <laughs> he just finds he a goes. way to be like, I know what you're really looking for. <laughs> you just want to mock the children of the forest. I'll let you do he that. He walks in slow motion towards <laughs> Tywin. And Tywin's like reaching Could out his see? hand. <laughs> and you are very cold for a king. The yeah. light of the seven starts playing. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be amazing. But I think house first would be the name of the day in that moment. I think yeah. Tywin would, would 
play there. Yeah. Um, he would find a way. He would find, he would a, find way. a way. We're yeah. almost done with it. We, we, we're forcing ourselves to be done with Tywin yeah. in this episode. We'll talk about him again. But Ace and I just wanted to get together and share our love of this character. Sure. Um, final moments, things, thoughts. You got a lot of stuff. Let, we're, me, we're, let me just yeah, say, do let, it. let me just say this. Um, as a, as a hip hop fan, mm-hmm. and I know I bring it back to this, but I got to do, do it, it as someone who's a hip hop fan mm-hmm. um, and a basketball fan. Just this idea of like, just sheer willpower and mm. sheer um, ability to overcome obstacles and just mm. the idea of like power and yeah. flexing and you know, the idea yeah. of flexing itself, like flexing, people can say flexing your muscles, but flexing right, right. really just means flexing your power. It could be wealth. Yeah. It could be knowledge. It could be any kind of power that you have. That's Taiwan in a nutshell. And that's why hip hop kind of, you know, mythifies these figures, Mm -hmm. whether it be uh, Scarface became a hip hop legend because of his idea of say hello to my little friend and just blasting Mm -hmm. homies away. Mm -hmm. Like this idea of Tywin Lannister, I still want to see the Rick Ross (laughs) Tywin Lannister song, bro. Bring me that with like a hip hop song. And he's like, and he raps about a Tywin, Tywin Lannister. That's amazing. Like, give me the hip hop because that's to me. You want the hip hop. If there's a, there's a hip hop character in Game of Thrones, it's Tywin Lannister. He's Look the guy that. who's like, hear me roar. Yeah. And then that's an actual name for a hip hop song. It's called hear me roar hear me or something roar. like that. Where this it's is like, beautiful. why don't you make this? Song? I, I, I look, he wants to, but I don't think I'm cool enough to do it. You're cool, man. Good enough. Rapper You're to do cool. It. You're cool. But it's one of those ideas of like, that's why for me, Ken, on yeah. the real, on yeah. the real, real, and this is me getting real. Get real. I still want my um, sun spear tattoo. Okay. I still want unbowed, unbent, uh-huh. unbroken. Gotcha. On my arm somewhere. Somewhere. Tattooed. But I s- do still mm-hmm. want hear me roar somewhere on my other somewhere. arm. Just that that light side, dark side. You never know what's coming, See? bro. I want this. I, I'm I'm bad. I'm bad. I'm broken. I, I, I'm I'm always gonna be. Yeah. You know. You're always house storm. I'm always house storm. But yeah. I'm still a little Lannister. Still got a little Lannister in me I, too. I think all the and cat- I can get that Lannister line <laughs> running right down my leg, leg. There <laughs> or you my go. back. There you go. As a tattoo, I, want- I got Game of Thrones tattoos. Yeah. And let's just say Lannisters are one side of them, <laughs> and on the other side, I got like <laughs> House Stark and House. Uh, Look. Look, man, I think Casually sure. Talk listeners should encourage you on Twitter to do this yeah. and get these tattoos. Yeah. Uh, we're going to take a call uh, here, uh, one of our messages, but uh, thank you so much. You have you brought great insight into the character of Tywin, and I love it. Uh, uh, you and I come from different uh, upbringings, different sides of the world, different everything, and to find a Tywin ally in you yeah. is wonderful. And I don't know if I can still fully explain it, even after an entire episode. All It's much like the Stannis thing. Actually, I think sometimes the Stannis thing I can explain, but I look at Tywin and I think, that's how you do it. Yeah. I think if I can't explain it, it it's just go watch it. <laughs> <laughs> Take because it, it's him walking up those stairs. And you know what it is? It's yeah. him sitting on the throne. Yes. That's what it is. When you see Tywin on yeah. the throne during that trial, trial. and he's like, playing with, he's just yep. moving his fingers in anger, yep. but he's still like keeping it controlled. That's, that's Tywin Lannister. That Tywin on the throne. Is it Tywin where he always really was, yeah. even when he wasn't. Even when he wasn't. On the throne. All right. We got one call today. We always take our calls. Uh, that is uh, what we love doing here. We got a call from our good friend, Eric Monroe. Hey, Ken and Cashley Talk. So Breaking Bad, which was a show I loved, did something very interesting. They made a two-hour movie about a character from that show. It was a sort of coda epilogue to Breaking Bad. It was really, really good. I loved it. And it got me thinking, what if Game of Thrones were to ever do that? I know that they won't. But it got me thinking, which character would I want to see in like a little two-hour movie to see what they were up to? And I think there's a lot of choices. I mean, John certainly a choice. Uh, Sansa, so she's ruling the North. Tyrion. I mean, and even Gendry, seeing him seeing him in Storm's End and see how he's doing, I think would be interesting. But for me, my pick would have to be Arya Stark because she was headed to places unknown. And I just think it would be really, really fascinating to see what she was up to. So my question, which character would you want to see? That's a great question. And, and I, I'm not a Breaking Bad fan. I, haven't, I just I know people hate me for it. I haven't really watched it. Um, but I know what he's talking about with the movie and everything. Deadwood just had a movie too. So this idea of a Game of Thrones 
follow up in any sense of the word. It's not unrealistic. It's not unrealistic that we could see. This. I almost think it is going to happen. Yeah, uh, and we're not even talking about the spinoffs and the prequels, all this stuff. Uh, a movie catching us up, and if you had to focus on kind of one thing, where would you go? If if it has to be a sequel, mm-hmm. which I guess is what the question is yeah. implying, it has to be Arya. Arya yeah. is the only one that wouldn't take you away mm-hmm. from the distractions of what's going on in the kingdom. Yeah. Because it's, it's so far enough disconnected where it could yeah, just yeah. be a solo Arya mission where yeah. she's discovering what's West of West. Yeah. It could be, it could be the same actress. It could be Macy. Yeah. It could be a different actress. It could be 20 years later. It could be Arya in her late thirties. Mm-hmm. Um, it, you could do so many things with so it. Much. You know, older Arya living with this tribe of crazy people yeah. in West of West or older Arya fighting off these scavengers in yeah. West of West, whatever West of West is. Yeah. And we kind of discover what that is. It could be two months right after it would be right. As yeah. she discovers West of West, whatever West of West is, is mm. why it works because it's yeah. so far disconnected from the bigger questions of like, what's Bran up to? Yeah. What's going on it, with gray worm? Like all those questions that people might have, or what's John doing? Yeah. Um, they don't have to have it if it's an Aria solo story. Yeah. It, it makes it easier for the writers to not worry about like it. It's really intriguing. The kingdom. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Because the kingdom becomes a bad reunion show where exactly. you're like, uh, and some look, sometimes it works. And honestly, it would, if in my opinion, it would yeah. kind of take away. From it, it. it would. It's, it's a, that's fine why line. I would prefer not to see anything yeah. unless it's an Arya. Like thing. the only other answer I could think like, I, I do. Do I want to see Sansa's reign of queen of the North? Yes. Do I want to see Bran the broken in action and what happens with Tyrion and, and all this? Yes, I absolutely do. But like you said, it, it, it wouldn't live up to the expectations. It'd be tough. It's a fine line just as a viewer. You know, so I'm, I, I enjoy the Gilmore Girls, and when they came back, I actually liked their. Re- I think they did it well, but it's still you had that kind of like, okay, I, I don't know if I needed these answers, and, and it's, it's tough. It's really tough. But John could work because again, it's different. If yeah. John's north and doesn't give no dams about what's going on, and he's got a, a redheaded wife and some wilding kids, I don't know what the but I feel shows the stakes, about. The stakes would be the stakes would be lower, very low. Aria, the stakes are immediately different. They are what they are. Because it's more of a mystery. And it's Aria, and I think we are behind Aria, and it's this big mystery. And then plus, as fans of the show, unless John goes to, you know, the, the land of always winter way deep to the castle up there and, and visits the Night King's home, you know, oh, he, he had a TV. They, he left behind some stuff. Um, yeah. I, I've, Other than I've that, been up there. Yeah. But yeah. the and we've been talking a lot with uh, Michelle Boyd and also Rich Cushing here on the channel of uh, Alyssa Farman from uh, Fire and Blood, who's the one who did try to go and and, and the, you know uh, they think maybe her ship was seen in a shy and that she had made the circle, never heard from again type of situation. Aria, it's the voyage of the Dawn Treader, which is what Michelle and I talked about specifically. That would really work, absolutely, and that would be my answer too. But but can I can I? Yeah, be the one person mm. to, to just pl- say please. And I know Georgia said no, 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 no. Mm-hmm. Come on, man, prequels, yeah. prequels, solo. Pe- how would it be so cool? We just talked about an entire mm. episode. We just did an entire episode of Tywin. Let's see, young Tywin. You want man. some of that? Let's see the reigns of Castamere get written. Let's see like it. the 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 halls. Yeah. You know, weep no more or cry yeah. no more, as yeah. the song says. Let's see him drown those people, and then it ends with the song, just yeah. like. Yeah, it could do It'd little be one so shots. So cool, man. Maybe It'd on be HBO just like Max. A, yeah, like a two-hour movie, and it and it could just be young Tywin, young Ned, young That's Robert, whatever it is. You can do these series. one little one-off stories that would be so cool. There you go. It could Ace. be Brandon Stark. Imagine Brandon Stark. Oh yeah. Come on, that'd be so cool. Luckily, there's more. Westeros, World of Ice and Fire, Game of Thrones content on the way. And that's one of the reasons we're doing Casterly Talk, getting ready for that. Uh, we'll see more of that. Uh, Andres Cabrera, thank you for coming in. You're, you're part of the show, but it's uh, with schedules, it's always hard to get everyone here at the table. Uh, unless the show's going on, uh, um, uh, we'll do that again uh, when the prequels hit. Uh, but thank you, sir, for coming in. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Uh, you do a lot of cool things, and I want all the Casterly Talk fans to support them. Yes. Where are they at? Uh, Please go find me on my YouTube channel at First Cut. It's where you can find my podcast with my podcast partner, RB3. Uh, we talk about movies, directors, reviews. We are trying to grow our channel, Ken. Yes, gross. So we are currently in the process of putting out more content, more right. reviews. Uh, so please go check that out. It's First Cut on YouTube, and it's the meaning of on Spotify mm-hmm. and iTunes. I'm at Squad Leader Ace, and that's where you can find me. 
uh, support this guy. And uh, hey, yeah, what do you think about talking some more Star Wars with me down Ooh, the that'd line? Be great, man. Let's Love do it. that. Let's put a pin in that one, Ace, and we'll talk Let's about it, that soon. You guys know where you can follow me at Ken Napsock. Go to my website, KenNapsock.com. And Mark Ellis and I are doing comedy in Washington, D.C., November 16th, two shows, 730, 10 at the Comedy Loft. Go to MarkEllisLive.net for information and tickets. Don't forget the audio book of Why We Love Star Wars is out along with the print version. That's it. Tywin, man, the kingdom was yours, and sometimes we still wish it was. We'll see you next time on Casterly Talk. Thank you.